I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I help run the Las Vegas Radical Mental Health Collective. I wanted to do a second video about ecstatic dance because somebody asked me some questions. So the person basically said that they're a thin person and uh, they, they don't have much experience with dance and they have very low energy. So basically he was saying, like, how do you do it? He was saying to me, you're a fat person, so how do you dance when I'm a thin person and I can't dance? And I was really curious about his question because to me the question had a lot of assumptions embedded in it. One of the assumptions was that thin people are more healthy and fat people are more unhealthy. And I know from my experience that that isn't necessarily true. I remember uh, the first ex one of the first ecstatic dance events that I went to, I was the fattest there by far. But I was the only one who danced the whole time. I think it was about three hours. The other people who were there, I thought they would dance way more than I did. But I was the one who danced the most at that event. So, uh, so I have, you know, experience of that. And there are a lot of ways to be thin, and there are a lot of ways to be fat, and there are a lot of ways to be disabled, and a lot of ways to be not disabled. So somebody uh, wanted to dance, but felt like they didn't have the energy or endurance or fitness. I would say uh, that anyone can dance. I think even if I was paralyzed, maybe, and I could only move my eyes, I could, I could dance with my eyes. Or sometimes I've been dancing with only like the top half of my body, just moving my arms and my shoulders and my neck and my head. So that's definitely an option because, uh, and also you could kind of start slow, like just dance for two or three minutes and then, you know, the next day dance for two or three minutes and try to work up to something more. But I also wanted to say, like the, the other idea I saw embedded in the question was about fitness. And I feel like the ecstatic dance is not about having like a spiritual experience through cardiovascular expertise. It's, you know, something else, it's doing something else, where the exercise aspect is, you know, definitely a, could be, is part of it and can be beautiful and welcome and helpful. But to me, the main thing about ecstatic dance is the ecstatic experience. And I realized that last video, I didn't talk about that very much. I believed that people already knew what an ecstatic experience was. But something really important to me is how the ecstatic dance can create its own energy. So uh, that's kind of one of the, my favorite things about it. Because when, when I start dancing and my body starts uh, feeling the new sensations of the new movements, and my body is collaborating with the music that I'm hearing, and my body is starting to uh, feel feel its truths that it doesn't feel through language that it only feels through movement then uh, I can access something new I can access an energy that could come from that experience like the joy of it or the transcendence of it so that's very valuable to me and that's a really important part of it but also uh, I wanted to say that uh, you know a lot of different people in a lot of different cultures have ecstatic experiences like uh, you know some people can find it through prayer and meditation and things like japa where you're like praying the rosary or praying on a beaded necklace uh, you know the repetition of prayers but also things like uh, running like maybe marathon runners something long distance where you're accessing you know endorphins maybe and then and then things like pain like people who do piercings or BDSM to have those, those ecstatic experiences um, that's a common thing or fasting people do or uh, even like sleep deprivation or dream work or um, those kind of things Pe people can access ecstasy in all those ways and when I was a kid 
I accessed ecstasy, you know, for as long as I could remember through religious experiences that were not authorized. They were not part of the Christianity that I was being brought to church to do by my mom. The ecstatic experiences were where I would kind of go into another place. Like I would be in church doing prayer and, it, and suddenly I wasn't quite where I literally was. Like I would go a little bit, uh, almost like another, slightly other dimension. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's literally what happened, but that's kind of like what happened where I was in the real regular world and then I went slightly, like part of me was still there, but part of me was in another world. And I feel like that's partly what I'm going for when I'm doing ecstatic dance. So there are all these benefits to it and it's very um, wholesome in the sense that other ecstatic experiences like piercing or BDSM or certain drug use, you know, the drug use that's, that's ritualized or that's recreational, those all can have um, you know, a lot of baggage with them or uh, stigma. But then something like ecstatic dance is, is very wholesome. There's no side effects really other than, you know, a little fitness possibly or, um, yeah, there can be a little pain, but, um, but, but I feel like the more you do the ecstatic dance and the more you get to know your body, the more you know how to cope with the pain maybe, or the more you can kind of account for it depending on, you know, your particular body. But I wanted to say that those ecstatic experiences are very meaningful to me and very healing. So that's what, I've, that's what I mean when I say that ecstatic dance is my favorite mode of embodied healing. Uh, because doing, going to the other place and accessing my body's truth through movement and having the ecstatic experience of, um, of God, of transcendence and feeling and experiencing God inside my own body and, in, and inside the, you know, in the world, my place in the universe as a moving, breathing uh, animal, like embodied uh, spirit and animal, then uh, that to me, that does more work or does a different kind of work, you know, because something like talk therapy or writing or in, any experience in a psychiatrist's uh, doctor's office is very different from the DIY, personal, uh, embodied, authentic, experiential experience of ecstatic dance. So I feel like I have many possibilities for healing modalities and ecstatic dance is, is free. It's personal. It's on my own terms. It's not somebody else's choice. And, and that's very beautiful to me. That's one of my favorite ways of doing radical mental health. So I'm really, um, I'm really happy to share these thoughts with you. And I hope that if you want to do ecstatic dance, you have a good way uh, to find res more resources on that. And I hope it can be a powerful healing modality for you also. Thank you.